So, but the first thing to, to ask about that, and the reason that I'm even bringing it up, is that you get a lot of people, especially in the liberty movement, uh, like I said, you know, I've been a liberty activist for a while, uh, the liberty movement has been pretty slow, as much as it's been the main driving force in pushing Bitcoin forward, it has been pretty slow in accepting Bitcoin in the more academic sense. Uh, because what happens is, is, you know, some guys that haven't been alive for decades didn't know about Bitcoin. And so, you know, going against the grain with what they think uh, is kind of anathema in a lot of, uh, lot of different circles. Take something like uh, the Mises Institute, uh, which does phenomenal work, but at the same time, very slow to change. So the question becomes, what exactly is money? Because that's the claim that goes around is that Bitcoin can't be money. And there's a million reasons for that. Regression theorem, there's so many different things that they talk about uh, as to why this, why Bitcoin can't be money, you know. And the first thing, of course, is you can't hold it in your hand. Okay, well, again, let's break into what exactly money is. What are the properties of money? Now, a guy, William Stanley Jevons, who uh, quite a few people came up with some independent ideas about money, but he's the most popular. He wrote a book in 1875 called Money and the Mechanism uh, of Exchange, okay? And he laid it out to being four different properties that constitute money. One of them is that it has to be a medium of exchange, okay? Which this is popular, Murray Rothbard would talk about that, where, hey, you know, in a barter system, which was the original form of acquiring, uh, you know, uh, a good from someone else is that eventually it gets to the point where look you can't give half a shovel you know to someone else uh, for you know whatever be I mean but things can't hold the same value like a, a shovel isn't worth the value of say a flint arrowhead so you had to come up with something to where you had an agreed upon value of what you were trying to get from another person or what you were trying to exchange. And so that's the first property of money, which is a medium of exchange. And it solved that. It said, okay, well, it's worth this many whatever. Of course, their claim would be that it's gold. You know, it's worth this many ounces of gold. So I give you an ounce of gold, you give me a shovel. Of course, back, you know, thousands of years ago, that might have been a viable thing to do. Uh, so the second thing, that the second property of money is essentially fungibility. There's a few different words, it all funds, falls under unit of account, but fungibility is basically, is it replicatable? You know, is it something that you can easily, like a, a poor form of money would be something that you could easily, you know, forge or mimic. Uh, so you didn't have kind of a, a scarcity. This is sort of where the idea of scarcity comes from, why that becomes a valuable uh, aspect for, you know, for, for a, a, a currency. Now, Bitcoin and, of course, gold have both, that's kind of the big deal with them is that they both have a scarcity. One's programmed, the other is believed. Uh, so that's important. The third one is a store of value. And a store of value means can it hold a value over time? Is, is this, uh, is, you know, whatever the monetary unit is, uh, is it recognized? Can it stand the test of time? That's one of the beauties of gold, right? Is that gold can actually, it's pretty indestructible, quite frankly. Uh, so, you know, can it be a store of value? And this is all very basic, but it's important to get these ground rules out. Uh, the fourth one is standard of deferred payment, which that is essentially, um, you know, is, is it actually recognized as viable? Is it, you could use the term, is it legal? Uh, and th that's not really the most important thing, but because it does, something doesn't have to be legal to be valued. Uh, so, but that, that's sort of the idea with standard of deferred payment. So those are the four things, uh, the four you know, uh, properties of money that generally everybody accepts.